Hi everyone. You've already seen how to solve a linear system and you've done that a few times um, graphically, solving a linear system graphically. Today we're going to look at an algebraic, right, just a, a mathematically manipulating way of solving a linear system, the method called substitution. Now, you know that a linear system is made up of two or more functions. And here we have two functions, we'll call them function one and function two in this linear system, y equals x plus four and y equals three x minus two. You also know that the solution to this system will be the x and y combination or coordinate that is true for both of them. And what that means is we will know what the solution is when this y and this y are the same and, and, this x and this x are the same. To say it another way, we will have the solution when x equals x and y equals y. That is x from the first equals x from the second and y from the first equation or function equals y from the second function. So we can start by asking ourselves, well, what does y equal in the first equation? Well, it's what does it equal? It's right in there in the equation. y equals x plus 4. And what does y equal in the second equation? Well, it equals 3x plus minus 2. Now, if y has to equal y, we could actually take what y equals in the first one and set it equal to what y equals in the second one. We could say that x plus 4 equals 3x minus 2. Now, what we've literally done here is we've taken this uh, thing that y equals in the first and we've actually substituted it into y in the second one. So we actually have to communicate this and so we uh, say that we are substituting, and we can just write sub for short, we are substituting 1 into 2. So that's a communication that says we've come up with an equation based on taking what y equals in the first one and substituting it into what y equals the second. Now we have an equation that has only one variable, an equation only with x's in it, and we are going to solve this equation for x. So, of course, um, we're going to get our x's on one side and numbers on the other side. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. And we're going to add, uh, subtract 4 from both sides. And I think that will work out to negative 2x on this side. And we'll get negative 6 on this side. We'll divide both sides by negative 2. And we'll get that x equals 3. So, we know that the solution to this system happens when x equals 3. How do we know? Well, because it happened after we made y equal y. Right? We substituted in and we found out that, well, y equals y when x equals 3. Well, what is y when x equals 3? Well, we're going to actually just continue on and we're going to sub that x equals 3, substitute it back into, well, it actually doesn't matter which equation we substitute it into. Um, to find the y part of the coordinate of the solution to the system because it will be the same for both. So if we substitute x equals 3 into 1, we get y equals, substitute the 3 for x, plus 4, and y equals 7. Now you don't have to do this every time, but let's just try it. Sub x equals 3 into the other equation to see if we get the same answer. We better, or else we're wrong. y equals 3, substitute 3 in minus 2 is 9 minus 2 is 7. And we finish with a concluding statement that says, therefore, the solution is the coordinate 3, 7. And of course, we could see this graphically. Here is the line y equals x plus 4. And here is the line y equals 3x minus 2. And indeed, they do have a point of intersection right here at the coordinate 3, 7. Here's a second linear system. 3x plus 2y equals 6. And the second linear function y equals negative 5 sixths x minus 1. If we solve this by substitution, we're going to either sub equation 1 into equation 2, or we're going to sub function 2 into function 1. Which one is easier? Well, sometimes we have to rearrange equations, and sometimes we can use them just as they are. The point is, 
we need to have an equation that is either in y equals form or is in x equals form in order to substitute it. So looking at what we have here, because equation 2 is already in y equals form, that means that we can sub easily whatever y is in equation 2 into wherever y is in equation 1. And so I think uh, I'm going to communicate that I'm going to sub 2 into 1, and I'm going to ignore the fact that I could sub 1 into 2. I could, but it's going to take some work first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and substitute 2 into 1, which means that I'm going to write equation 1, but where there's a y, I'm actually going to substitute in the negative 5 over 6 x minus 1, and then continue on with my equation. Right. And now I have an equation with only x's in it, and I can continue on and solve. And so here I go. Remembering, of course, I'm going to have to uh, expand that 2 into those brackets. I get 3x. Now, carefully watching my signs, I'm going to get minus 10 over 6x minus 2 equals 6. Right? And maybe I want to put this in lowest terms right away. This, I guess, is uh, 3x minus 5 over 3x minus 2 equals 6. Now, I have something, an equation with fractions. Um, I hope you know by now that if you have an equation with fractions, uh, you can eliminate fractions in an equation by multiplying everything in the equation by the lowest common denominator. Now, this is not something you have to do, but it's something that makes life easier, especially if you're not um, really comfortable with uh, working with fractions. So looking at this equation that from which I want to uh, get rid of the fractions, I notice that the only denominator I have is 3, and therefore I'm going to multiply everything in this equation, both sides, by 3, which is the lowest common denominator. So 3, and it might be easy, even easier if I do it all separately. It's your choice whether you can expand it in one shot or do it piece by piece. 3 times 3x is 9x. This 3 and this 3 cancel, and that's what gets rid of the, the fractions. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 6 is 18. So now I'm going to just rearrange correctly and finish off by finding that x equals 6. I'm going to continue on by communicating that I'm going to sub x equals 6 into, and I have a choice whether I'm going to sub it into 1 or 2. Um, why don't I just sub it into 2? Here we go y equals negative 5 over 6, sub in the 6, minus 1. Now this 6 in the numerator and that 6 in the denominator are going to cancel out, and I get y equals negative 5 minus 1, and y equals negative 6. And I'm not done until I declare that. Therefore, the solution is the coordinate 6, negative 6. Here is a third example of a linear system. I mark my two linear functions in the linear system and I'm going to decide how can I solve this by substitution. And you remember that I said, well, I either have to have an x equal or a y equal to sub into the other equation. Right now, I don't have either of those things. So I'm going to ask myself, well, if I don't have either of those things, then how can I get an x equal or a y equal equation? Well, I'm going to look at my equations and notice that here everything's full up with coefficients, but here I have kind of a naked x, an x that has no coefficient on it, and that means that this is going to be an easy equation to rearrange to be x equals negative 2y plus 4. Same equation, just rearranged. Now I have an x equal, and I can make whatever x equals here, sub it in for the x in the second equation. Here we go. So I'm going to declare that I'm going to sub my first equation into my second equation, and here it is, the negative 2y plus 4 substituted in for x in the second equation, and expand, uh, collect my terms, 4 minus 12 is negative 8, and so I know that my solution contains 
the fact that y equals 1. And so I'm going to continue on and I'm going to sub y equals 1 into, oh, I'm going to sub it into 1. That one looks easier, perhaps. x plus 2 sub in that y equals 1 equals 4. So x plus 2 equals 4. And easily enough, I get that x equals 2. If I subtract 2. Therefore, the solution is the coordinate to 1. And since you know how to check, maybe we'll just do this really quickly. Uh, I'm going to check whether the left side equals right side. In 1, I'm going to uh, first of all sub in my coordinate to 1. Here we go. Well, on my left side, I get that x, which is 2, plus 2y, and y is 1. And on the right side, I have 4. This is in my first equation. And this is 2 plus 2, and this is 2. Sorry, it's not 2, it's 4. And so it looks like my left side equals the right side in the first equation. Let's just check in the second equation. Uh, on the left side, I have 3 sub in my 2 minus 2 sub in my 1 on the left side. On the right side, I also have 4. Work out the left side. 3 times 2 is 6, 2, and 4. And so I just finish with a little concluding statement that says that left side equals the right side in 1 and in 2. Therefore, my solution is correct. So to summarize, you can solve a linear system algebraically using substitution. Uh, I would say your first step is going to choose one of your equations, whichever one is in x equal or y equal form. Of course, you might have to rearrange if it's not in x equals form. And then you're going to substitute one into the other. That will give you one equation which you can solve for the x or maybe it's the y coordinate. And you will sub that x value that you got, or maybe it's a y value, into either equation 1 or equation 2, doesn't matter which one, uh, to get the other part of your coordinate from your solution. And then, of course, you might have to, or you might be required to check your solution by substituting into both functions and checking that left side equals right side in both.